So I wanted to ask you, this kind of goes beyond, you know, the documentary and the duration of time where you filmed. We have a turnover in government. Gretchen Whitmore is now the governor. Rick Snyder is out. In terms of accountability, in terms of people going to jail, in terms of actually getting this fixed, what are we looking at? Is there any hope or is it still people dragging their feet, bureaucracy kind of um, slowing things down? What is your sense in that regard? You know, obviously, it, it's not moving as quickly as I think it should. Um, like I said, and like I think you're pointing out, this is still a crisis. I mean, it's not like it's gotten better. I mean, maybe the maybe the numbers are fine if they test the right way. Maybe they'll find the numbers are fine. But I could tell you, people don't usually get rashes five years later and 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 hair loss. And th- if the water's just dandy, and I've anecdotally, I've tasted the water in a few places. It tastes like dog piss. So. I, I could tell you, Governor Gretchen Whitmer optically is way better than uh, Governor Snyder. She has come to Flint, including last week. She did a panel with residents about regaining trust. She actually, during that panel, confirmed our reporting. She, somebody mm-hmm. asked her about the water testing. She said, oh, you know, there's been reports about running the water. Um, she has not publicly said anything as far as there needs to be an investigation about this. She has not publicly said anything about there needs, it needs to be looked in as far as the ex-governor. I think this is a bit of Barack Obama syndrome where he said we don't want to look backwards as far as Bush and his officials. We want to look mm. forward. Um, I, there could be a lot of reasons for that, I, political reasons. Uh, so in the nitty gritty, optically, she's better. She's she's visited Flint. She's talking to Flint residents. But nitty gritty, I mean, there's still a lot of pipes that need to be replaced. And not to get too in the weeds what a lot of people don't realize, and the media, because they're all lazy and not that bright, it's not just the service lines, so your audience knows. The service lines are the water pipes from the curb into the house. They're only changing those. They're not touching resident interior plumbing. And a lot of the problem, it's not like, okay, Jesus could bless the water, if you believe in Jesus. He could bless the water anew. It goes through brand new pipes that are not lead. But if it's going into busted interior pipes, there's still chance for lead and other heavy metals to come off those pipes. So they're not touching the interior plumbing because by law, the interior plumbing is the homeowner's responsibility. Well, the homeowners did not change from Detroit's water to the Flint River. The homeowners didn't forget to add the proper corrosion control chemicals. So they're not touching the interior plumbing. And I think that's a major thing they could. And this, the only reason they're changing the service lines is because of a lawsuit from uh, ACLU and residents and this and that, that got a lot of money towards service line replacement. So I think one thing I want to, I don't know if it came across in the documentary, but if this happened anywhere in Manhattan, if this happened anywhere in DC, probably even Portland, um, would have been fixed pretty quick. Yeah. Um, even in Michigan, they found high levels of PFAS, which are cancer causing chemicals that they're finding actually a lot more all over the country. They're, they're chemicals made from the manufacturing of things like Teflon. Governor Snyder, that, it, it was happening in, in cities in Michigan that are a lot more white, more middle class. There was free water going in there right away and action right away. So I don't really bother with environmental racism. This is just racism. Yeah. Uh, you know, Flint is predominantly black. There's, but it's also, uh, as Bernie always talks about and gets criticized for, it's also a class issue because there's a hell of a lot of poor white people in Flint, too. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the last thing is what I hope the documentary shows, because we tried to show the history of how things got so impoverished in Flint and how things got so bad. Things like a water crisis don't happen in a vacuum. It, it, the reason it happens is because there is a controlled demolition of what once was the middle class. Flint, for people that know, you know economic history, Flint was called Vehicle City. Flint was at one time had some of the best schools in the country, had the middle class, had auto workers from General Motors. They used to have over 100,000 auto workers in Flint from General Motors uh, and other cities. But when you start, um, you know, selling off jobs to China and Mexico, racist rezoning laws, white flight, um, when, you know, in the in the in the spirit of economic development, the private all these privatization schemes, the Flint water crisis, the media never covered this way. It was really a privatization scheme. Yeah. They were they were temporarily temporarily switching to the Flint River 
while they were building a privatized water pipeline. And when they switched to the Flint River, the environmental de the Department of Environmental Quality actually broke the law. By law, you're supposed to add corrosion control chemicals into the water for the exact reason. So old pipes, because our government has not changed the pipes in over 60 years all over America, don't corro don't leach lead. So I want people to understand this happened. It happened because Governor Snyder appointed an unelected emergency manager that was essentially a proxy for him. The emergency manager decided we're going to we're going to switch from the Detroit water system, which never had a problem for Flint. Flint purchased its water from Detroit system to the Flint River, which I don't know about Portland, but think of like the Hudson River in, mm -hmm. in, in New York. I mean, this is like, you know. General Motors had dumped its parts in there for over a century. Jeez. You know, you had, in some cases, dead bodies rolling around. So I hope people watch the documentary. And I also people, I hope people realize that independent media is critically important. So we were able to do it and knock on the doors because our viewers funded us. We're growing, but like fund independent media, whether it's us, whether it's Mike, whether, whether it's whomever. You know, some people, uh, you know, expose things from a studio setup. Some people expose things from, uh, you know, knocking on doors, whatever it is. We're all trying to expose what the corporate media and frankly, the politicians are covering up. Yeah. So I hope people uh, realize that uh, if they watch the documentary, which I hope they do, um, this is this is happening in more places than Flint. And the only re the only way that you light an inferno under politicians behinds to make them do something is to wake more people up, because I guarantee you there's Republicans who will see this documentary that will be pissed.